my name is Jenny Vanoss, and I'm an assistant professor of atmospheric sciences in the geosciences department at Texas Tech University. So this was a pilot study um, conducted uh, in Lubbock, Texas at Irvine Elementary School and there was two components to it. The first component um, was understanding UVB exposure to children while they're playing um, and how that can be changed through design. And the second component was understanding the thermal comfort of children while they're playing using both measurements and survey techniques um, in order to understand uh, what kind of thermal environment they're experiencing while they're playing on these playgrounds. First, we used um, individual sensors, um, eye buttons that measured air temperature, um, that each children had their own eye button, UVB dosimeters um, that measured UVB radiation exposure, and then each child had a heart rate monitor on. And in total, we had 16 children as part of the study. And then, to get a sense of the microclimate, we used a portable weather station that was hooked up to a solar panel and we collected information on air temperature, relative humidity, um, mean radiant temperature, and radiation fluxes, so short wave and long wave radiation from the ground and from the sky. Um, and then we also collected wind speed and direction. We also measured surface temperatures of the different materials that the kids were playing on. So there was grass, asphalt, concrete, and wood chips. All of this data can be put into models in order to model the thermal comfort of a human and we then model with a, an, an, a model called the Kumpfa Energy Budget Model um, that allows us to predict what the child might be feeling based on their metabolism, based on the radiation, based on the air temperature, wind speed, um, and humidity. And then we validate that with actual surveys of the children. So what we did was we used um, one-page surveys that contained about four questions, and we asked them about how they were feeling thermally, what their perceived thermal comfort was, so whether they were okay or hot or cold, and then we asked them um, how, how they would like to change. So um, they would say whether they were fine and they didn't want to change at all or be a lot cooler or be a lot warmer. We asked them about their comfort level and if they were tired. So we did this um, about three times each day at the end of each activity. Do you wish you were a lot warmer, a bit warmer, no change? No change. No change? Are you comfortable? Yes. Do you want more sun or less sun? Do you want more wind or less wind? Who else hasn't gone? Hot, warm, a bit warm, okay, a bit cold, cold, cold. Hot. Or do you wish you were no change, a bit colder, a bit warmer, a lot colder? A lot colder. Are you comfortable? Yeah. Do you want more sun, less sun, or the same? Leave me alone! Do you want more wind, less wind, or the same? Do you want higher temperature, lower temperature, or the same? Do you want more sun, less sun, or the same? Do you want more wind, less wind, or the same? Each activity took about 20 minutes, and so in total, they were playing for about an hour. Um, and so we are now analyzing that to try and validate our model for children. And the model has never been uh, tested on children before, and, and no study that we're aware of has tried to um, assess the thermal comfort of children while they're playing outdoors. And so we're also really interested in the effect of shade on both thermal comfort of the children and on their exposure to UVB and solar radiation. And so along with the children wearing their own individual dosimeters, which would tell us how much UVB they were experiencing as they played, we had a UVB monitor on the station. So we knew exactly how much UVB radiation was reaching the surface where the children were playing. And so we're able to compare those between um, the children playing under the shade sail and then the children playing in the sun. And so far, results are showing that there's about an 80 to 90 percent decrease in the UVB exposure um, of the children when they're playing under the shade sail. This research is really important because children are very vulnerable to the effects of extreme heat, and we also want them to be able to play outside even when it's um, warm out in the warm season. And so we can design these spaces in ways that can make them more thermally comfortable and thus more uh, conducive for kids to play there. So um, if they're using shade or different types of surfaces such as grass versus concrete um, or wood chips versus uh, asphalt, 
Um, all these different kinds of design changes can actually mitigate the heat exposure to children, especially since um, children are closer to the ground. And so if they are over a really hot surface, then um, they will be exposed to more heat near the core of their, temp core of their body than adults. So in urban areas, children are already exposed to higher temperatures due to the urban heat island effect. And when we combine that with the rising temperatures due to climate change, the temperatures that children will be experiencing now and into the future are ri rising. Therefore, we can use bioclimatic design techniques to cool the spaces that we um, expect children to be the most active in so that they can continue to play rather than um, having to stay inside and not, not be able to play. And so we just want to make these spaces safer and more thermally conducive for the children to play in.